Hi, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about 5-2, more minimax applications, is what the book calls it. These are applications where we actually have to use the decide between two options. The main difference between this lesson and the last video is that we'll have one or more options. If you haven't watched the last video yet, please do. But here's what I'm talking about. As we learned in chapter four, we can basically tell the shape, or at least the bone shape, as I call it, of a graph based on the sign chart of the derivative. So last week, or last video, sorry, we had a, a maximum derivative number line that would look like this. We had, oh, it was plus and then minus. So our parent graph had to look like this. The antiderivative graph had an upward movement and then a downward movement. Our parent graph, our antiderivative was increasing and then it switched to decreasing. So there was only one option from being maximum. That was it. But what would happen if we're looking for a maximum and our derivative number line had looked like this? Mm. Where we decreased but then increased. Now you might be saying, well, that would just be a minimum. Exactly. The critical number would be a minimum, but what would be the maximum in that situation? And it's hard to tell because if we were going to be more specific on an actual graph, on an actual graph, if that was the critical number, we could have this kind of movement where this endpoint was here and we decreased very slowly and then increased very slowly up to here where that was higher. Or in the same kind of number line, we could have, as you can drop down here, a very slow decrease on this end of things. I guess I went sharper. And then a very sharp increase over here. So both of these graphs would have the same first derivative decrease. Sorry, first derivative is negative, then positive. Negative, then positive. But just looking at the number line, we can't tell which is which. And that's where we have to use the techniques from the day which is, spoiler alert, use candidates test or the extreme value theorem. And if you need to brush up on that, the candidates test is in lesson 4-1, which our videos are up already. So I'm gonna clean all this off. We're gonna use the candidates test. We're gonna narrow down our options could be two or more options, I guess I should have said. And then we're going to use the candidates test. Anyway, our first steps are still the same. We're going to label our stuff. X will be the first number. Y will be the second number. Write our primary equation. So the sum of two non-negatives is 30. That is not our primary equation. That looks much more like a secondary equation. The reason I can tell is it actually mentions a number. Our primary equation, we should always look for the word maximum, minimum, smallest, biggest, something like that. In this case, we have is a maximum. So we're trying to maximize. And most people, again, get stuck here. Oh, we want to maximize the second number? No. We want to maximize the sum of 
twice the first plus the square of the second. So here's our first equation, our primary equation, twice the first plus the square of the second. That's what we want to maximize. Now we're going to want to exclude one of the variables here. We don't want to have both variables. We'd like to have one variable on both sides. So we need our secondary equation. Our secondary equation is that first sentence, the constraint, the one that actually tells us where to stop our domain. The sum of these two non-negative numbers would just be x plus y. How nice, how quaint. How easy is that? Now, which one do you feel like getting rid of? I want a challenge. So I'm going to get rid of y. We're going to actually substitute out y. Now, you can do it without, you can do it with substituting out x. That might be easier. But if we substitute out y, most people like to use x. It simplifies things. It works either way. If you want to, you can just have everything with y. That's great. Um, here we go. So, if I'm going to try to replace y in this equation, I want to solve for y in the secondary equation. Does that make sense? If I want to replace y in this equation, in the primary equation, I want to solve for y in the secondary equation. And if I combine these two, I get a new m equation. I get a new primary equation that looks like this. Remember, when we substitute, we want to use parentheses. Um, yeah, we'll leave that for now. Step four, I get the domain from here. The domain, what is the smallest x could possibly be? Usually a good way of thinking about this. Well, can x be negative 1? Hmm. Well, it says we have two non-negative numbers. And you know what negative 1 is? It's negative. It's not non-negative. So negative 1's out. So it's negative 5 or negative anything. But what about zero? And in this case, zero is in. Zero is non-negative. Zero is also non-positive. Zero is not negative. Zero is not positive. So we get to include it. Cool. Now let's think about biggest numbers. Could x be a million? Well, a million is definitely non-negative. Is there anything else stopping us? And again, that's when I want to direct your attention to our secondary equation. If x was 1 million, y would be some giant negative number. So that would not be okay. So here we look at this equation, and with some careful thought, we would find out that x could only go up to 30 including 30, but not past it. So x could be 31. Sorry, x could not be 31, because then y would be negative 1. But x could be 30, and then y would just be 0. Make sure you understand that argument. That's a huge part of this. If you can't do that part, you can't do most of it. 5. Time for the calculus part. Taking the derivative, if you're good at foiling, you could simplify this first. I'm not going to worry about that. I'd rather use the chain rule and practice the chain rule. Bring the two down. Keep the inside the same. Subtract the power from by 1. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 30 minus x is negative 1. 
because simplifying this expression should be cough, 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 easier than simplifying that expression. Especially if we clean this up a bit, we get two minus two, combining our coefficients, or even two minus 60 plus two X, negative 58 plus 2x. Find some critical numbers. m prime equals 0. 0 equals 58 minus 2x. And how nice, we don't even have to think about the domain for once because we would get x equals 29. And that's our only option. That is in our domain. Hooray! In the last video, I left out considering m prime being undefined. In those that video, you can go back and check. Same thing, m prime is a polynomial, so there's no way to be undefined. If you're dealing with a function that has domain issues, you should worry about m prime being undefined. But this one will not be undefined not on this domain. So we wanna make a number line, we'll do that. We will have to use the Canada's test. That's a spoiler. Bracket zero. Bracket 30. For an illusion, I'm gonna for the I'm gonna put 29 right over here. Definitely closer to 30. Between zero and twenty-nine, we will have a negative. After 29, between 29 and 30, this gets harder to check. You can use whatever value you want. 29.5 is not that bad. Um, 29.5 times 2 is 59. Yeah. Yeah. You could use 30 also. It is included. So now our M shape would look like this and then this. So this is a little misleading. A lot of students tend to have this opinion, and it really is an opinion, that because we are decreasing from zero, until 29, that obviously 30 has to be smaller. Like, oh, well, if it decreases, wherever it is over there, all the way to 30, 29, and then increases after that, it just has to increase so less. But not if you're clever. So here we go. Here's me decreasing my way all the way down to 29. I'm going to use a concavity trick here. Still decreasing, right? Oh, not the end there. Still 29. Keep okay. And now, even though it's only one unit, I can rock it up to be higher than I ever was before. So do not assume that just because it's decreasing for, quote, longer, that it has to end up smaller at the end. Graphs can be weird. Decrease can mean lots of things. It can mean decreasing very slowly. It can mean decreasing very quickly. Careful. That's what I'm saying when I say the only way to check is to use the candidates test. I guess I glossed over this, but to make it clear, 29 is a relative minimum. It's not going to be the max. It can't be the max. It cannot be the max based on the shape of the antiderivative graph. And that's why all of this comes down to the candidates test. I'll look at my time I got jacked up. So we're going to use the candidates test as I spoiled at the very beginning of this video. So candidates. 
because of the domain, we have to check both the endpoints. So one candidate would be x equals zero. You know, I'm gonna make an ascertainable. You know we only have two candidates. So we have the x stuff and we have the m stuff. Going back to the antiderivative. So in x equals zero, m of zero, not m times zero, m of zero, going back all the way to that light blue stuff you can't see in the text. Great job. That thing right there would be two times zero plus 30 minus zero squared. That would be zero minus, or plus 30 squared, which is 900. Pretty big, pretty hard to beat. Our other candidate, the other endpoint, would be 30. Which is 2 times 30 plus 30 minus 30 squared. 0 squared, 60, 36. So which was smaller, which was bigger, sorry. Which is bigger, this one. So that means zero was the source of our biggest number, our biggest maximum. Our maximum occurred at zero. Again, that's what I mean here. This was maximized even though it was decreasing longer. This was still the bigger number. Careful, it might not come from your intuition, it might come from your intuition. So here we go. That's all there is to it. If you need help reviewing the candidates test, that's in section 4-1. If you need help reviewing this, you could look at 5-1 or 4-2. That's 5-1 or 4-2. Alright, so sentence, the sum is maximized when the first number, not x, when the first number is zero and the second number is oh we never checked sorry if the first number is zero the second number is 30 i'll do the math on that in one second oh no not backwards um x equals zero means y equals 30 minus zero Okay, that's why I got that. Right over here, that secondary equation, yet again. All right, go do some problems. Good luck, have fun, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.